We made this video because my friends with big commercial sawmills were laughing at me and my small chainsaw sawmill. But I know how much I love my independence and I know how much power this brings me in my crazy projects and same for other people. Today we have a little bit different topic and this is chainsaw sawmilling which maybe seems not related to didgeridoo making but actually it is. Maybe you have seen my five most important didgeridoo machines, this is one of them. This helps me to turn logs into posts that I later drill and make digits out of it. I have been drilling a lot but I have been milling a lot as well and in the past few years I've heard many misconceptions about chainsaw milling you know and I want to present my perspective because I feel it just needs to bring balance to the universe of understanding how things are so let's get into it I bought this machine seven years ago I think the price was around 1500 euros I'm not sure anymore and it's farmer sawmill it doesn't exist anymore it's now i think f2 and uh, there is f2 plus which is a little bit bigger and a little bit better many of the things that i don't like about this machine are actually solved in the new iterations but i would like to go quickly about what was wrong and how it was sorted so one simple things were these springs here which um, lock the bed into position they got stretched and uh, I've written to Logosol, they've sent me a new prayer right away. I think I lost it, I think I wrote again, they sent me again, uh, but now they're here. The machine was working fine without it as well, I, was, I would just press the thing back into place when the spring didn't pull it. Another thing that I really didn't appreciate was this bolt in the carriage breaking many times. For me it felt like it was of the 5.6 quality, not 8.8. .8. I even put a 912 bolt here, but it broke as well. And then I drilled another hole and put another bolt here. And everything was fine since then. I think the new carriage has M8 bolts. These are M6 and they are under dimensioned for this. And I think it's also sorted now. One thing that bothered me and I actually never understood why it doesn't bother other people are this XL log clamps. They just keep opening for me. You know, this part just keeps opening and I have to put another clamp like this which looks quite stupid to hold the log in place um, but I'm usually milling quite hard wood and the log is too hard for these teeth to pierce into it so they don't hold it as well so most of the time actually I'm using this basic holders and I just hammer this into the log and it works perfectly uh, but it needs another hammer you know you will need other tools a lot of the time like here i have this magical thing you know that everybody has this is the, the thing which tells you how high is the cut on the other side and you know this thing stays with you for a lifetime it's very important to keep the, the, the original that you found the first day that you were milling i said ah this one is the right one uh, it's usually kept here after a while some of these holders were breaking and I had to repair pretty much all of these connections. I put some steel plates that I drilled and I just bolted it again. So it wasn't a biggie. And that's a big thing about this sawmill that it's quite simple and you can do your own repairs. You don't have to be a mechanic to fix it. And I think the new iteration of the sawmill is actually way better with these connectors and the, I don't think they break anymore. So I think most if not all of the things that bothered me with this model are actually now improved and if i would buy again i would definitely you know not go for the old model second hand but i would buy the new machine even though this is a very nice thing about logosol it, it keeps its value very well we made our own sawmill dunk and i a while ago before we had this one it was a steel construction and um it took us like a month to build, you know, and it was quite a lot of work. That is way heavier sawmill, you, you can take it around easily. We had a lot of problems with some small design issues, you know, things were jamming, things, things weren't going straight and so on and so on and so on. And in the end we bought this sawmill and we haven't used the old sawmill ever since. Another really nice thing with it is I can put it in my van and I can go to my friend's place, which is what I did several times. We cut, I don't know, small, small large logs, uh, 
there which nobody wanted to cut for this guy and he's like a tree surgeon and he always has some things extra or I go and cut some walnut somewhere. I can put this into my van without even uh, dismantling it. One thing that really got us into buying this sawmill is that you have this adjustment of beds. And when you have imperfect logs, like we often do, then you have a lot of the tapered logs and things that you want to compensate. And this is really easy to do with this system. Also, if we don't want to cut normal posts for the digits, but uh, there is a little bit uh, more space to do a bigger bell and we don't need that much wood on the mouthpiece then we cut it irregularly and this system allows that uh, really well. We use this sawmill mostly for cutting blanks for the judos but we've used it also to make a staircase in our house. We used oak for that. We used it for cutting uh, the posts that hold some of our walls. We used it for cutting uh, wood for our compost and it's very hard sometimes, you know, for the compost we need black locust because it's very resistant to rot. And it's very difficult to get someone to cut you a small quantity of black locust. And like this you have this independency, you can do it for yourself. And many people are really skeptic about chainsaw sawmill, people who cut with bandsaw and they think, but oh, this is too slow, but actually, you know, most of the time is just adjusting everything perfectly and then cutting taking a good look at the log, where is the sender, how it goes, how it flows. I usually don't cut boards on this, but I do sometimes. But if I have maybe five cuts per, um, per log, because I'm cutting thick, then I'm, you know, losing some 20 millimeters in comparison to someone who cuts with a bandsaw. And if that's a log which is like 80 centimeters or 60, it isn't something, you know, big. And besides, the cuts on this thing are incredibly accurate. If the chain is sharp and if everything is set right, you will not have waves. And I had some really sad stories, like I had a beautiful giant ancient walnut. I don't know how old it, it was, but way older than 100 years. And I bought, brought it to the commercial sawmill where they were rushing and the bandsaw was blunt and we're talking about a, a monster bandsaw and it has huge waves you know because the blade was blunt and I lost a big part of that walnut um, which is a very sad thing for me you know I don't know if I will ever find that kind of walnut again this has never happened to me when I'm cutting with a chainsaw sure it's a bit slower but actually, if you have a sharp chain and if wood is uh, not really dry, it cuts very easily. It feels like butter. For me, if I had a budget for a bandsaw sawmill, I would buy a chainsaw sawmill and a loader, which is actually what I did. Because the loader makes it so much easier and so, so much faster for you. Because you can bring the logs, but also you can bring what you have cut to the other place. You can bring, bring the scraps where you need it. Even the sawmill uh, dust you can collect and, you know, you take it on a pallet. But if you really want to cut for yourself, and I'm cutting just for myself, I'm cutting for my own projects, which is mostly my instruments, and I want to have really high quality of cut, I'm not stressed about the thickness, about the curve, because I just have a few cuts, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three cuts, and in that amount of cuts you just don't lose that much wood and it's very easy to maintain the chainsaw you can always take it to the maintenance shop it's very easy to sharpen the chain so for me i'm super happy with this machine and i think you shouldn't underestimate the power and the smoothness and the natural flow of the chainsaw sawmill i think logosol does a fantastic job with the products and i think the new new sawmills are even better than this one if I would buy again, I would buy same like this, but bigger. And I hope they make it even bigger because they might talk me into buying it. It's incredible how with little material uh, they have managed to really make a full working system and how well it works. These keys, I think we made them, they're obligatory for the sawmill. We made them seven years ago. They're made of black locust and they're still part of the machine. And so, the machine gets a lot of sturdiness, it gets uh, a lot better with maybe some tweaks that you do. Um, yeah.
but the, the general solution is just great. And this was an intro. So my secret plan is to cut the hardest wood on the planet with this sawmill.